<laughs> this week in the Monday Night War, the Intercontinental Championship Tournament continues. Our Razor and Diesel coming back to the WWF. This is the go home show for In Your House Mind Games. And on Nitro, Fallout from War Games. The NWO adds a six member. Well, we could count it later. Sting and Lex versus Mongo and Benoit. SP3. Yours truly, Romeo. This is True Rewind 82. Six. This is True Rewind. This is True Rewind. This is true. Rewind. This is true. This is true. Rewind. This is true. Rewind. This is true. Rewind. This is true. Rewind. Hello, hello, hello. It is me. It is me. The True Hill Phenom SP3. We are back once again on Fightful Overbooked. Jump in the DeLorean. Pump up the flux capacitor as we go back in time to September 16th, 1996 for Monday Night Raw and WCW Nitro. This is True Rewind episode 82. Six. I am here. With the driver, the pilot of the DeLorean, the ace in the face of the True Hill Heat YouTube channel, Mr. Romeo Anthony Colon. What's up, brother? What's up, everyone? Thank you, as always, for joining us. Um, I'm looking forward to Mind Games. I wasn't looking forward to this Raw. I'll tell you that much. That's fair. That is fair. Uh, I'm definitely, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be interested in Mind Games for sure. It has one of my favorite matches of the Monday Night War. Uh, spoiler alert with what's going to probably be my match of the night for the pay-per-view. But if you watch this episode of Raw, you had no idea there was a pay-per-view until the final eight minutes. Spoiler <laughs> alert. Um, but yes, it's two good shows. Remember, everyone, if you're joining us for the premiere, if you're joining us on demand, remember to drop the thumbs up on this video. Share this video with all your wrestling fans, friends, and family on all your favorite social media platforms. If you are new to the Fightful Overbooked YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell to stay notified for all the great content here they're getting daily content here on fightful overbooked i'm here a bunch of times throughout the week as Every romeo day. told me I, I am overbooked on fightful overbooked but i am glad to be here in the delorean to go back in time with my good brother here so as per usual romeo is the driver of the delorean so take it away let's start with raw so we get it out the way raw was taped from Wheeling, West Virginia. And the show started with uh, King, JR, and Kelly on commentary. But uh, Jake the Snake comes out and he chases off the King. Their rivalry continues. Jake the Snake is facing the debuting Sultan with Bob Backlund and the Iron Sheik, the former Fatu. New look. Jerry gives He's us making his a difference. Theory. He's making a difference with this new character. This backstory, holy sh... With tensions in the Middle East building up, legend has it that the Sultan was captured and held hostage. He wouldn't talk, so they cut his tongue out. And he's here in the United States where there's freedom of speech, but he can't talk. Lawler throws <laughs> a... <laughs> what can you say? What can you say to that backstory? <laughs> Oh, geez. Lawler throws a small bottle of alcohol to Jake, distracting him. Sultan waits with a, with a camel clutch. Sultan seemed restricted from wrestling his style that we know. He was slow, he was plodding, and it was just worst off. This was an awful. Uh oh. <laughs> Heavy breathing. <laughs> she's, she's like trying to take stuff from me. She took the Harlem mic. She went to, to, to just take the headphones. She's about to knock over the fan. This is how it is when you have kids, everyone. <laughs> you want to say hi? 
uh, say hi to the people of Fightful Overbooked and, and your Uncle Romeo. Harlem say hi. World. Harlem World. Say hi. Harlem World. Sticking <laughs> your tongue out at him. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> as far as this match goes, Har- Harlem's thoughts, uh, I will reserve that for our Patreon backers. They'll, she'll let them know there. Uh, but no, nah, this match was nothing much. This was just a match to continue what is one of the worst feuds of the Monday Night Wars of Jake the Snake Roberts and Jerry King Lawler because we know in retrospect 26 years later that uh, Jake the Snake is still has addiction problems. So not the best usage to kind of remind him of his addiction problems. Every freaking chance you get and every single match he gets. As far as the Sultan, uh, this is like one of the days. worst. Yeah, this is like one of the worst. He he will see better days once his hair is blonde and he finds two white boys to act black and dance with. He will be fine, but for now, but his he will get a WrestleMania he, payday out of this. So this is true. This is true. If WrestleMania payday with one of the biggest stars and a man that he will do some conspicuous, some bad things for in the future. He will have his family. <laughs> he, he did it for him. He did it for for him. Um, but yes, uh, this 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 first match, I you could throw it away pretty much. Lawler did have a line I laughed at, saying, "If Jake would have wrestled any longer, he would have wanted overtime pay, time and a fifth." <laughs> I don't laugh at any of these Jerry King Lawler jokes. They're, they're, <laughs> they're just in poor taste. Come on, yo. These are just poor taste jokes by Jerry the King Lawler. He is outrageous. Shout outs to the to the homie, Kevin Kelly. Kevin Kelly, I've been complimenting his work in the G1 Climax back in 2022. And he uh, replied to me and told me thank you for complimenting awesome. his commentary. So, so shout outs to Kevin Kelly. Nice to see him back on Raw in 1996. Let's hear from Dave Meltzer. From the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Jake Roberts has been added to the WWF Booking Committee, which is something he's been pushing for for months. Roberts will join Jim Cornette, Bruce Prichard, Jim Ross, and Jerry Briscoe in writing and booking the shows. Although the end of the day, the final decisions always come down to Vince McMahon. I, I hope he's not in charge of his own storylines because this would be kind oh. of <laughs> this wouldn't be this wouldn't be the best choice. <laughs> wouldn't be the best choice. I honestly didn't even know he was on a booking committee ever. So this must not last long. It probably did. But Jake, we're gonna continue that story. All right, I quit. <laughs> <laughs> Pillman backstage with Owen Hart. And he's excited about his exclusive interview with Bret Hart on Sunday, Mind Games. Owen's happy that Brian brought he and Bret together. And then Stone Cold Steve Austin interrupts, saying he wants answers too, because he's the best there is. And weirdly, Pillman and Owen seemed fine with that. What do you think? Um, I liked Owen talking about how Pillman has made his parents happy now that him and uh, Brett have, uh, you know, doing this reunion. And uh, he also says that Sunday we'll see the reunion of the Hart family. And I like Stone Cold. This was a nice little long term booking rarity in these days of uh uh, well, WWE, is, it seems like it's going back to that. But in 1996, this kind of was par for the course of the long-term booking of heading into Survivor Series. We know one of the big matches, and they are already building to it with Stone Cold uh, kind of harassing and insulting Bret the Hitman Hart on the mic. Oh, yeah. Bob, Spark, Plug, Holly, and Alex Porto versus the Smoking Guns with Sonny, the tag champs. Non-title match. And JR announces on commentary. Razor and Diesel will be there live on Raw in the ring next week. Cam Cornette comes to take a seat at ringside. Sidewinder. Billy doesn't go for the cover, distracted by Owen on the apron. Water's thrown. 
Spark plug rolls up Billy for the win. The guns complain. Sonny loses it. And Jim Cornette was great mocking their crying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this was one of the only feuds or matches that they actually built up throughout the duration of the show for mind games. It's going to be Bulldog and Owen versus the Smoking Guns for the tag team titles, which kind of seemed like it came out of nowhere. If you just watch Monday Night Raw, I, don't, I think this is the first week that they actually built up to it. Besides, you know, the little interaction that we saw a couple of weeks back between Jay, uh, Jim Cornette and Sonny about who's the better manager. You forgot to also mention before the match, Sonny revealed a centerfold above the ring once again, uh, showing off her goodies. And uh, yeah, the smoking guns look like incompetent champions because they lost to a race car driver and the punk. Booking your tag champs to lose. Where have I seen that? Oh, SmackDown. Yeah, uh, like this past <laughs> Friday on SmackDown. You know, I had, you know, I, there was some people on a different channel who said, oh, man, they've been champions for over a year. They can lose now. Like, you, you're idiots. You're the reason. <laughs> those, those fans are the reason why 26 years later, we still have to deal with this type of booking of tag team champions losing to random tag team. If it was a non-title loss against an established team, if it was a non-title loss against the the challengers for the pay-per-view, Bulldog and Owen, I would be fine with it. But at no point should your tag team champions be losing to a Franken team. A team we'll never hear from again, most likely. Very cringe ad for WWF superstars where a guy falls out of a plane and forgot to pull his parachute because he's watching WWF. What the <laughs> hell is this? <laughs> Awful. It's like, it's like WWF. It'll make you kill yourself. Oh, <laughs> what a tackle. Uncle Gino. Gorilla Monsoon. Says he's interested by JR's report because Kevin Nash and Scott Hall will not be appearing on Raw. He apologizes to the fans for being hoodwinked by JR. He will stay on the broadcast here on Raw to make sure there will be no more misleading information. And that's enough for JR to leave the commentary booth. It's like, I'm out of here. Enough of this shit. Um, I, I, I did like uh, Gorilla explicitly, <laughs> explicitly uh, stating that Scott Hall and Kevin Nash are signed to another promotion. They didn't name the other promotion, but he did specify they work for they are assigned to another promotion. Um, I I don't know what it is, but it felt like throughout this show, the feud that they put over the most was Jim Ross and Gorilla Monsoon. More than anything on the pay-per-view, the feud, the match I want to see now is JR versus Gorilla. Let's go to Dave Meltzer. From the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. The latest news on the WWF's fake razor and diesel angle is that both Rick Bogner and Glenn Jacobs will indeed be playing the roles of the characters on the live Raw next week. Bogner canceled his wrestling commitments in Japan so he could return to the U.S. for the role. They've essentially turned Jim Ross heel for this storyline. With Gorilla Monsoon acknowledging on TV that Kevin Nash and Scott Hall were under contract to a different company and putting all the heat on Ross. This whole angle is being dismissed by pretty much everyone as a fraud and ratings for it are pathetically bad, but they keep pushing it so hard that Dave Meltzer thinks they must have something bigger planned than what you see on the surface. Spoiler alert, nope. <laughs> nope. It is what it is. This is, well, this is just like, um, this is just gross. This is gross. This is one of the, <laughs> when, you, when you talk about disgusting promotional tactics in the Observer Awards at the end of the year, like, this is one of them. Because you are purposely lying to your fans to what? Turn an announcer heel? That's your big payoff from this? Is that an announcer that is arguably one of the most beloved announcer of this of this generation? Not at this time, but he would go on to become one of the most beloved announcers of the generation. You're turning him heel. This is just in. Uh, it's 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 mind boggling. 
why they Bro, did this. Let's go to 2022 for a second. And let's just imagine. Imagine. Friday Night SmackDown. Hit Row is here. And let's take, you want to take Michael Cole or Pat McAfee? Let's take one of them. Probably Michael Cole because uh, he's the more respected one. Um, Michael Cole says next week, uh, Swerve Strickland's going to be here with, with the Hit Row. <laughs> No, Imagine Isaiah that. Swerve Scott. Isaiah Swerve Scott. Okay, there you go. Isaiah Swerve Scott. Isaiah Swerve Scott will be here. We'll be here. Uh this this Imagine is like that. them saying, no, this is this is uh, this is even bigger than that. Yeah, that's a lesser Isaiah, scale. Because yeah, that, that's a lesser scale. This is like WWE going off and Michael Cole being like, Oh, next week we're gonna have but uh, Daniel Bryan and CM Punk here on, on. that's the and Dean Ambrose. And yeah, Dean Ambrose. Dean Ambrose. And Dean Ambrose here on Friday Night SmackDown. Yikes. Jim Cornette with Vader and Jerry. Uh, doesn't like being forced to wrestle that fossil, Jose Lothario. Vader's been training him. And Tony Williams is here in the ring to work out with Cornette. And Williams, in business for himself, reverses all of Cornette's impressive wrestling holds. Vader has enough and attacks. Then they tie Tony up and Cornette slaps him like he's Jose Lothario. What what was Tony Williams doing here? Did he have a death wish? I, I guess so. I guess he didn't real he didn't uh see the the four hundred pound monster who was just <laughs> he was just circling him like a goddamn shark circling a piece piece of meat in the in the ocean. Like he was like, you know what? You know, uh, Cornette paid me to just take his moves. Now nah, I'm going to show off, show off my in-ring ability. Maybe I get booked again, but he got his ass kicked because of it. Semi-final in the IC tourney. Owen Hart versus Mark Merrill. Pat Patterson on commentary will apparently rough the final in the tournament. And JR is back, still reporting his bullshit. And Gorilla And Pat Patterson him. believes him. Pat Patterson believes him. Pat. Gorilla interrupts from his office to put him in his place. King says JR is throwing a Tiger Woods temper tantrum. Wow. How's that? Oof. Owen uses his cast while the ref isn't looking for a near fall. Owen argues with the ref, and Merrill then uses the cast for the win. This ref awareness was zero. Like legit, the ref saw both both times the cast was used in this matchup. Owen used it, and then Merrill used it, and the ref pretty much did not even try to disguise the fact the that he saw it. <laughs> like he's right there, he's right there. How do you not see the cast? Um, yeah, but like this was this was a a well wrestled matchup that the commentary team did not give any crap about it. Like, they were too busy talking about Gorilla, calling out JR, uh, for lying to the public about the returns of Razor and Diesel. Yeah, JR saying that he has never lied to anyone. He has credibility. He wouldn't ruin his credibility like that. So the Gorilla comes back on the split screen to say this isn't about their friendship because JR was like, we've been friends for years. Like, how could he do this to me and he's like he hasn't <laughs> seen anything to say that scott hall and kevin nash are returning to the wwf i love how he keeps naming them by their real names and basically telling people to turn the channel at this point that's what you're screaming you were screaming because you're probably fans of wwf that never watched wcw and are like who's scott hall and kevin nash i know who jr is talking about he's talking about razor ramon and diesel haven't seen them in a while and then you're saying Scott Hall and Kevin Nash work for another promotion, basically telling these loyal WWF viewers, hey, maybe you should turn the channel so you could find out uh, why he's using the terms Scott Hall and Kevin Nash, their real names, because that's what they're referred to over on the real show, the show that's giving you just a little bit of realism and some entertaining quality uh, professional wrestling television. Go turn to that. That's basically what this was. This was an ad for WCW for people to turn the damn channel. Yeah, we're going to guess this raw rating a little later on here. Bret Hart 
is back, baby. But wait, wait, wait. He's in South Africa. He's sending in a recorded video. He calls Brian Pillman a liar. <laughs> Boy, that seems to be the common theme of this freaking show. Everybody's lying their liar. asses off. Everybody's <laughs> not being liar. His lovable brother, Owen, is as bad of a liar. But he loves his fans, and he hasn't decided what he's going to do. That's all he's going to say. It was good to see Bret Hart again, though. It was good. The show desperately misses him. <laughs> misses him so much. But you're advertising him for, for Sunday, and here he is. <laughs> Lying asses. All right. Another semifinal in the IC tourney. It's Psycho Sid versus Farouk. But first, side by side, Ahmed Johnson with a video message. Did you write this down? Uh, no, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't get this. Um, I did get the other the the promos that closed the show, but uh, right. this one this was too fast and in the split screen for me to get. Sid with a choke slam. Sonny creates a distraction. Farouk gets a chair and uses it behind the ref's back. A lot of a lot of that tonight too. Uh, Sid kicks out at two. Sid then gets the chair and uses it for revenge in plain sight of the ref. Disqualified. Doesn't care. The crowd loves it. He attacks Farouk more with the chair. Two IC tourney matches tonight end with weapon attacks and one in which Sid did not even care about the championship <laughs> just disqualify me. It'll be Farouk and Mero in the like final. I've had enough of this. I'm out of here. I don't care if the ref is watching me. I'm going to use the damn chair right in front of him. But he's psycho, so it makes sense. It was over. It was psycho sits over. The crowd loved it, but who cares about the title, right? Who cares? Who cares? Undertaker obviously, promo. Obviously, this promotion doesn't care. They talked through <laughs> the last one. It didn't pay attention to in-ring action of, of the, the better matchup. And then in this one, they had Amen talking. They were talking about... Uh, Sunday and stuff, and then eventually Psycho Sid was like, you know what? I don't care either. Let's move on to the final segment of the show, which was you'll uh you will will take this over. In a dark location, we hear from The Undertaker to speak about his match at In Your House Mind Games against Goldust, and he says After the Sunday Gold dust. You're right. I'll never forget the name because yours is the first on a list of many that must be destroyed on my way to mankind and Paul Bearer. So, Gold Dust, this will be your final curtain and the premiere of the new Undertaker. New. <laughs> After that, we get uh, the rundown of all the matches for In Your House Mind Games because they had not promoted this show at all for the first, <laughs> for the first, for the first 40 minutes or so of the show. And then we hear from the challenger for, for the last, what what was this, a one-minute promo? We literally have not promoted the main event of your pay-per-view on Sunday. We haven't seen Shawn Michaels throughout the show, but we did hear from the challenger and his manager, Mankind and Paul Berra, with Paul Berra saying, Oh, yes, it's that sexy boy. Not a boy <laughs> toy. Oh, Shawn Michaels, you might see some sweat so on Paul Burr right now. Something you're not used to. But I kind of like it in the heat of this boiler room. You're going to be sweating all right when you step in the ring with the WWF gold around your waist against my mankind. And then mankind says, when I win the heavyweight title, will that make me a sexy boy? <laughs> will the girls 
all want to kiss me? <laughs> Will they want to whisper in my ear? Or will they just run in fear? Because I think I'll like that most of all with the cold thrown around my neck. <laughs> will any day be a nice day? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it was. It was like a tie or something around his throat. Like he choked himself. <laughs> I barely could understand what he was saying during that, but I just like with the gold thrown around my neck. What an episode. Um this 24, 23 minutes we've spent talking about it, way more entertaining than the actual 55 sitting down and watching. I got some more news. This is actually correct. I got some more news for you. From the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. J.J. Dillon resigned from WWF last week and is reportedly heading to WCW. The news of this resignation apparently caught Vince McMahon by surprise. Dillon was one of the main bookers and the main talent liaison to the front office. I guess head of talent relations. Uh, And that explains to Jake Roberts going to the booking probably. There's no confirmation that he's headed to WCW, but it's widely assumed he is. Dylan would be valuable to WCW because he has a ton of backstage knowledge about the WWF. As Dave put it, he knows where all the bodies are buried. <laughs> when you when you hear shit like you've heard in 2022, that, that line right there carries even more weight. Uh, so WCW stealing away J.J. Dylan is uh, presumably a big deal. Yep. Seems like a big deal there, and we we shall see J.J. Dillon on uh, WCW television rather sooner than later. Some of the matches for Mind Games, Henry versus Lawler, Smoking Guns versus Owen Bulldog, Lothario versus Cornette, oh, HBK versus Mankind, and Undertaker, Goldust. Match of the night, Mero Owen. Mero Owen. I don't, I don't think there's a yeah. any argument against By that. Far. By far, MV, MVP. I'm gonna go with someone near and dear to your heart, Gorilla Monsoon. I went with Gorilla Monsoon and Camp Cornette. Uh, they were they were on the show in two segments, and they stood tall and made their the champions for this Sunday look bad in one. And then Cornette got to uh, look good after the selfishness of Tony Williams. And speaking of Tony Williams, that's one of my LVPs, but also LVP is Jim Ross. Uh, I'm not going to say Jim Ross because we don't know yet if he's wrong. Um, so I'll go with the smoking guns. And uh, we'll put our thumbs out. Three, two, one. Thumbs up, thumbs middle, thumbs down for Raw. Three, two, one. Double downer for both of us. The rating. I gave you a hint earlier when I said this Razor Diesel stuff is stupid and hurting the ratings. Last week, they did a 2.4. What do you think they did this week? 1.9. Not that bad. Not yet. 2.1. Okay. Okay. Hasn't slipped under 2 million yet. We'll see. (laughs) Let's go to Asheville, North Carolina. Go to Nitro. After a recap of War Games, Tony Schiavone says, duh, they should have known Sting was in Japan last Monday. Like, I was Tony like, also I was apologizes. Like, you guys are stupid. What, what the hell? How do you not know that? How do you not know that? You literally, and then throughout this show, they're literally telling us that the rest of the WCW roster is going to be in Japan next week. I was like, you knew a week before for them? Wow. But didn't know for Sting? <laughs> Earlier today, some NWO propaganda was being handed to fans as they entered the arena. We start things off. WCW Cruiserweight Championship. Juventud Guerrera versus Rey Mysterio Jr. 
I thought this was the first time we uh, got a commercial break during the opening match because I think it was. Remember that? Might have been. We cut from this match you'd probably want to see to an NWO tailgate fan party outside. Ray reverses a powerbomb off the top rope into a Hurricane Rana for the win. Why it was good for what we saw. WCW or WWF think we want to see we don't want to see good matches. Because <laughs> they either don't pay attention to it on commentary or they cut to it if you're WCW, they cut to something else. But this was a lot of fun. You had you had uh Ray catching Hoovy in midair with a drop kick at one point. He then follows with the 619 fake out. This was before the 619 was an actual move. He just used to do it to fake people out. Then he hits a springboard Huracan Rada on the outside. Hoovy comes back with a springboard spinning heel kick, follows with the baseball side, that acai moonsault that you just showed. Back in the ring, Hoovy follows with a springboard 450 splash for two. <laughs> Carrera then uh hits a Twisting uh, avalanche, Huracan Rada for a two count, and then that finish was great. Like I, I really enjoyed this matchup. Mike Tanay backstage with remember what remember what we we were doing those uh, Wrestling Observer uh, reports on Mean Gene. He is nowhere to be seen. It's Mike Tanay with Mongo, Deborah, and he who should not be named. Mongo wars like warns Lex to. Go get Sting. Let, let me let me, let me let me oh, let me okay. tell you what let me tell you what Lex. You better beg Sting to come back because I told you what would happen if you let the horseman down. Deborah, tell him, tell him how I get. <laughs> I forgot you do Mongo voices. I gotta I gotta start remembering that. Benoit says, "Prepare yourself to pay the price." We get no, no, no! You missed the best part. Oh, what did I miss? Benoit, after Benoit's promo, Mongo just incoherently just goes. Ah! <laughs> I so, started he's dying so worked, laughing. He's so worked up. I started he's dying laughing. Up. It came out of nowhere though. He was just like ah. <laughs> we get a glacier hype video with him talking. And I don't, I don't know about you, but for me personally, his like normal voice, it, it took away all any, if you had intrigue or mystery with his character, hearing him talk just like, it's like real, ugh. it's like, okay, he's just a normal guy. <laughs> he sound like a regular mechanic, like a mechanic <laughs> that's fixing your car and doesn't want to quit talking it was just like you just killed the character right before his debut even even on um, my lady mrs p3 came into the room and just was like he just keeps rambling on and on and on and i was he like yes talking a lot. exactly exactly this killed the character but it was a smooth transition from glacier to ice train with teddy long versus diamond dallas page the finish of this match is not seen as we cut to the back to show more NWO propaganda. These teens barricading the WCW merch stand uh, with signs that says, who wants this crap? DDP was the winner, apparently, when uh, he was in a submission. He threw Teddy Long's towel into the ring on behalf of Ice Train. Nick Patrick shakes the towel in front of Teddy Long and Ice Train's confused faces. We see a replay of the finish, and it looks about as horrible as I described it. Just an <laughs> overbooked mess right here on Fightful Overbooked. Commentary doesn't even comment on it during the replay. We just hear the music play. I, I was I was mystified by how bad this finish was to the point where I was just like, well, you cut away from the finish. You should you shouldn't have even replayed it. You should have just said, oh, yeah, very confusing, controversial finish. Uh, we'll talk about it more and then not talk about it because showing the finish made it worse. Who wants this crap? Who wants this finish? Who 
who wants this crap? Talk about both of the shows we had to watch this week. <laughs> Conan tells Super Calo he is no longer Rasa because he's not running with his set, the Dungeon of Doom. <laughs> One, two, three, kid. One, two, three, kid. He's in the crowd. Or is it Sean Waltman? Or is it six? One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. The kid is here. One plus two plus three equals six. Six. Holy Bingo. shit. Tony mentions he was released from the WWF. We got Super Calo versus Conan. Conan coming out to the dungeon music is just awful. <laughs> it doesn't fit his character one bit. It's like, what are we doing here? Get this guy Conan his own theme. He did have his own theme. Conan, Conan clotheslined the shit out of Callow. Callow landed on his neck, trying to sell for it. Callow in a submission. Uh, Conan throws up gang signs, asking, where's the NW? On the top rope, Callow tries to reverse Hurricane Rana, and Conan doesn't get much air. Lands on top of Super Calo. <laughs> Oof. What a bodge. Super Calo, sh shortly after, gives him a receipt right after. He just flips onto Conan's prone body on the outside. After some more crazy bumps by Calo, Conan finally ends it with the power drop. Listen, some things didn't go smooth in this match, but they were going at it. Oh, my God. I was entertained. This was an entertaining matchup just for the botches and how they were hurting <laughs> each other. This was just good. This is just entertaining to watch. It wasn't necessarily a good match, but it was definitely entertaining. Waltman tells Tanay he is trying to be incognito. He's been in Japan. He wanted to come last night. Ask who won war games. Tanay very annoyed by that. And when Waltman hears it, he's like, ah, shucks. Darn it. Darn it. The NWO one? Darn it. Darn it. Darn it. Like, I, I love the, the delivery of that, that darn it. That was great. Well By done. Uh, six. Hugh Morris versus Brad Armstrong. Hugh gets overconfident with a lackadaisical pin at the end. And Brad takes advantage the crucifix pin for the win. Morris salty after with a cheap shot, but Armstrong celebrates as we get second hour pyro. They had to rush to finish this match before the second hour started. At least they've learned that you don't want to have a match in the ring while the second hour pyro is going off. It's time for a Macho Man Randy Savage interview with Mike Tanay. Mike Tanay whew, put his working boots on tonight after recapping what happened last night with the giant and you know what let's try something different here let's doing the macho man voice hurts but i have this whole promo written because it was so i don't even know what's the word beautiful <laughs> <laughs> like i'm gonna read this out as if it were a poem okay okay and the poem is called one marble i think that's a good name for this poem I did write that down that he's kept talking about he has one marble left. So bad. <laughs> Listen to how beautiful this is put together. Listen. Living hard and living fast. Don't know how much longer I can last. The bottom line, I'm dying. The nightmare continues. But I'll tell you something right now. I'm rock bottom. No, I'm not. I'm a million miles below rock bottom. A lot of people say I got nothing to live for. Hollywood Hulk Hogan, guaranteed personified, you and me are alive on the planet Earth at the same moment in time. And guess what? I'm going to get really, really scary because of the fact that now I'm down to one marvel. <laughs> and if I lose that one, it really doesn't matter, brother. Can you take what I got for you? I don't think so. Bring it on. Ooh, yeah. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that beautiful when you put all those words together and you just read them? 
with the tear in my eye. That was that was very touching. That was it. <laughs> <laughs> the man that's down, that's down to his last marble, scratching and clawing, and he still, he still, he still thinks that he can accomplish his goal. That was beautiful. That was beautiful. We got Bischoff and Brain on commentary now. And in the parking lot, the NWR are toasting with red solo cups and fake sting. Stang. Hogan says there's nobody left in the there's nobody left in the building to beat up. Nash likes the sound of a NWO nitro. Then we get Randy Savage versus Scott Norton. I was just like public intoxication much. They're just out there drinking, no issues. Hey, Red solo cups, cups, open, we don't know open what's in those cups. They got open we don't containers. Know what's in there. Hey, they got open containers out here in the streets, man. You know how Scott Hall get down. Norton runs to the ring, and they just start scrapping at ringside. Very weird booking. These two have no feud to be doing this. Hey, and then they Macho did feud in the days of WCW Nitro. Say that again? Remember, they did feud in the beginning days of WCW Nitro when oh Norton was God, first introduced. Feels, feels like a year ago. It was. <laughs> Macho Man loses it, hitting Norton with a steel chair to the head. Then another. And then another. Shoves Nick Patrick to a big pop. And Norton is declared the winner. Nick Looked like he wanted to cry. Probably, probably did cry. Um, are, are you like, what are we doing here? I I don't know. The number one <laughs> contender for the WCW World Heavyweight Championship has lost back to back matches in two nights. In a, in le- in twenty four hour period, he's lost two matches. They don't know how to book. They don't know how to book the Macho Man. I am convinced. I've literally been saying this for for a whole year of doing this show. 82 episodes. They don't know how to book the Macho Man Randy Savage. They love the going crazy bit, using weapons, not caring about the result of the match just because it gets the crowd really hyped up. The crowd loves seeing Macho Man lose it. That's their formula. It's time for the Nitro debut, uh, because we did see him on some highlights last week. Bubba versus Glacier. The look of Glacier. The snow falling down. The lighting during the whole match. The whatever's on his eye. Listen, uh, Bubba did his best selling for Glacier. Glacier wins with a sidekick. The snow falls again. Uh, in this new world of Nitro, where the NWO, you have all this realism going on. There's no place for this. This is 1995 WWF or 94. Or, or, and Glacier or, uh, is just a slow, he's a slow martial arts guy. He's not speedball Mike Bailey out here, you know? <laughs> Or 2011 or WWE or 2019 WWE because Glacier with the blue light during his matchup, I was just like, oh, this didn't work in 1996 based on the crowd. And then why did WWE choose to do it twice? They did it with Sin Cara with blue and yellow light. And then they did it with The Fiend with the red light in 2019. It's like, you should have learned from this. This is the instant that you should have seen that that lighting during the matchup. It doesn't create an aura for the character. It just is stupid. It's stupid. Glacier wins. He The finish looked good. But other than that, yeah, he's no speedball Mike Bailey. <laughs> I don't know. You just made me want to see a triple threat match now with Glacier, Sin Cara, and The Fiend. And now I wonder who would control what the what color the lighting is. Well, that's weird. Sting in ring promo with his back turned practically the whole time. This was great. This was great. <laughs> Talks about all his doubters who didn't believe him. Says he's been a babysitter for Lex, which is true. Uh, he's given Lex the benefit of the doubt a thousand times, which is true. 
Yep. He's given his blood, sweat, and tears for WCW, which is true. He will stand by the people that never doubted him. For anyone who did doubt him, you can stick it. Sting calls himself a free agent. From time to time, he will pop in when you least expect it. Here's the name WWF should have been using. Oh, Sting's a free agent. <laughs> if you're going to lie. How'd you, you you love this segment, didn't you? Sting, Sting is... Uh... Love the symbolic nature of him having his back to the to the hard cam throughout this. That was great. His verbiage was awesome, and it just set the stage for one of the greatest babyface runs in history. One of the great greatest character arcs in history. The Sting that we've known and grown to love in these first eighty-two episodes of WCW is no more. We will never see him again. But in will come an even greater, more powerful, more mysterious Sting yet to come. So in that sense, this is a historic moment right here on this Nitro that this is the last you see of this thing. Wow. We get uh, Jericho and Marcus Bagwell coming out together. And then the Four Horsemen music hits, but nobody comes out. We cut to backstage where it's Flair, Arn, and women talking to Elizabeth. Liz is terrified. Woman offers to stay and talk to her. Arn says, fuck her then, and just fucking walks out. <laughs> Ain't got time for this. <laughs> Sean Waltman in the crowd messing with some button. I thought it was a bomb at first, but no, it's it's just releasing some propaganda that falls from the sky. There's so much of it falling, they have to go to commercial break. Arn tears one of them up. Eric reads some of them. I have some of them here. Uh, they're still falling when, when they return. This one says, we beat you. Now you're paying all the bills. <laughs> Here's another one. NWO, we'll do TV our way. I... <laughs> I, I like <laughs> I like I like all this uh propaganda with the, with the sayings that it has. I, I we saw that this is who who wants this crap earlier. Uh, I think it's clever. I liked it. Uh they probably dropped way too much of it, but hey. Probably like a it. little too much, but uh I I do dig. It does feel like a guerrilla movement which it make it makes sense why it became like kind of baby they baby faced themselves because they're so cool. True. It's uh, Jericho and Marcus versus Flair and Arn. Flair gets and th the thing with throwing all that paper down is that now you gave the entire crowd uh, these paper rolled up paper that they just throw at everyone in the ring. Throw it all. Flair gets tired of getting hit by paper. He just grabs a bunch and throws it. We see backstage the NWO limo with the entire NWO and Sean Waltman included. Giant plays a recording of Sting. In front of the fake sting. Uh, Hogan says sting got stung. Woman interferes in this match. Raking Bagwell's eyes. Arn with a DDT. Flair with the figure four. And Nick Patrick counts down Bagwell's shoulders. Not seeing woman helping Flair with leverage. Anything on this? What did you think about that, that recording they played in the back in the parking lot? It's the sting. Stay. Uh, I, I'm wondering when uh, Sting said this. Uh, if we if we can go back in time and uh, get the exact uh, episode in which Sting said this, I do remember him saying something like this: "Don't trust anybody" and stuff like that. So it was very clever of the NWO to get that that recording and play it. So it sounded like Sting was in the uh, limo last week. Um, so yeah, they they fooled everyone. Now WCW looks like idiots with egg on their face <laughs> and once again they did not care about this match with four good performers in the ring they did not care about this match one bit main event time benoit and mongo with deborah versus lex luger and supposed to be sting who <laughs> we saw sting earlier there is no sting he's out he's gone like Luger had two hours. He had two hours to figure <laughs> out a, a different partner. What the hell happened? Luger somehow in this two-on-one is able to overcome the odds to get Benoit in the torture rack. 
But Flair and Arn run down to interfere to save embarrassment. DQ finish. The horsemen put a beat down on Luger. In the parking lot, Scott Hall hires a cameraman, says he worked for us now. Uh, Bischoff says the newest member of the NWO will be called Six. NWO are night watching Nitro in their in their limo. Hogan says everybody in WCW is going to Japan next week except Macho Man. Six asks for a ticket to see Macho Man. He's always wanted to see Macho Man. Hogan says he thinks he gets tickets, maybe even ha, some backstage passes. It was so hilarious. He loved that joke. And that's the end of Nitro. <laughs> Six is born. And next week, that's the hook. WCW is not going to be around. It's going to be the all NWO of stars, show. All of our stars are going to be gone. Since you guys since you guys love the NWO so much, it's going to be all NWO so with the Macho Man. Uh, I did not understand the booking of the Horsemen. First of all, you made Benoit and Mongo look like chumps who Luger was about to beat handily hmm. on his own. And then... You basically, like, you, it seemed like the Horsemen, based on the crowd reaction, based on this whole storyline with the NWO, they were turning babyface. And then they just went back to being heels on this night. Four-on-one beatdown? Like, what? What the hell is going on? Yeah, the NWO... They're, better, they're like, really I, blaming I, Luger for that loss at War Games, uh, the War oh, Games match. I, I can understand that, but it's just like... Jesus Christ. Oh, man. The booking is all over the place here. <laughs> but there was some good wrestling on the show. At least we at least we got that. Match of the night. I'm going to go Conan Callo. Despite a few botches, uh, I thought they went to war. but And it was, a, it was longer than the opening match. And I think I saw more of it. I got to <laughs> go with Mysterio and Hoovy. That was high-flying stuff that would not look out of place in 2022. MVP, I'm going to go with six. I go with co-MVP six and the man they call Sting. Sting once again, showing out. The la Bon Voyage, sur Surfer Sting. Surfer Sting is no more. LVP, I'm going to go Nick Patrick, who had an awful night. And I'm going I'm gonna go with the fans, too, for, for throwing all that, that paper at the performers. Classless. I went with Ice Train for losing a match that he had. He was he had a submission on somebody else and lost by forfeit. I've never seen that in my life. Thumbs out. Three, two, one. Thumbs up. Thumbs middle. Thumbs down for Nitro. Three, two, one. Thumbs up for me. Thumbs in the middle. For my speaker. Yeah. Rating. I would have went thumbs up, but uh, yeah, the NWO, the lack of NWO in the actual building hurt the show, and the booking of the Horsemen hurt the show as well. So that's why it's thumbs in the middle. The rating last week they did a three point seven. What do you think they did this week? Go three point eight. Three point six. Oh, okay. Went so kind of weird that Raw went down, but and so did Nitro. So in the ratings war, wrestling. in the ratings war, WCW wins. However, the three point six to two point one is that difference. One point five is the biggest beatdown Nitro has ever given the Raw. Well deserved Nitro's for that crappy, crappy Raw episode. And they were going up against Monday Night Football. I just thought about it. September sixteenth, football correct. season just started. So. That is understandable correct. why ratings went down for both shows. Uh, Nitro has won 12, in, 12 weeks in a row. They're up 29 to 17 with two ties. And here on the True Rewind scoreboard, we both agree WCW was the better show. So WCW is up 31 to 17. Sounds like a football score in the Monday Night War here on True Rewind. Tell them what's coming up next, SB3. I think this uh, this this gap is only going to get wider as we continue on in 1996 and finish up 1996. But yes, next up, 
True Rewind 83. We got In Your House Mind Game. Shawn Michaels defending the WWF Championship against Mankind. Then we got True Rewind 84 with the fallout from Mind Games, as well as uh, some more NWO centered storylines over on WCW Nitro. So, bunch of fun stuff on uh, coming up over the next couple of weeks as we as WWF heads on to the road to Survivor Series. Uh, WCW is on its way to, you know, Halloween Havoc and the end of the year with Starcade. So we'll get some interesting programming because this week was not the most interesting. <laughs> in my opinion. Um, let's, let's do our outros. You can follow me, True Hill Romeo, on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, join our Patreon, patreon.com slash True Heel Heat for as little as $3 a month because by the time this airs, I'll probably, I've already done it, but I will be doing a watch along to In Your House Mind Games. I, I am trying to do more watch alongs of this True Rewind content for our patrons, so that'll be fun. Uh, if you're already a patron, you have already known about this watch along, so, but for the future, if you're not already a patron, for the future, we'll be doing more of these watch alongs so you could join us. And Find me on the True Heel Heat YouTube channel, Raw Watch Alongs, NXT Watch Alongs, Dynamite Watch Alongs, Pay Per View Watch Alongs on the weekends, and on the sports channel, True Heel Heat Sports, where we talk, we're breaking down uh, football, we're previewing it, football before the football season starts, and we do watch alongs on the weekend for uh, major fights, uh, boxing, and UFC. Yes, Romeo is a busy man. I am also pretty busy with my stuff here on uh, FIFO Overbook. You can see me on Mondays on FMC with Jeremy Lambert talking about anything but professional wrestling right now. It's usually going to be the Challenge USA. We had our great Challenge uh, Fantasy Draft. Romeo is a member of the Blue Barracudas, uh, my my Challenge team. We will see. Uh, we will see. We will give you the results if you haven't already uh before this episode airs check out fmc where we'll tell you the results of who was voted as the best team from our challenge uh fantasy draft over on twitter then on tuesday i'll i was also on pillar to post uh as jeremy lambert continues to screw me over on pillar to post or did he find out Check out check out the latest <laughs> issue, the latest edition of Pillar to Post. You can find me on the Twitter machine at True Hill SP3. Follow the gang, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram at True Hill Heat. Pro Wrestling Tees.com forward slash True Hills for True Hill Heat merchandise. And over on the True Hill Heat YouTube channel, you can see me on Thursdays, 105 p.m. Eastern Time on AE Ramble with Jimmy Macaram reviewing AEW Dynamite. You can also see me on Saturdays at 11.05 a.m. Eastern Time, True Hill Heat. Check out the last episode, True Hill Heat 188 with our Women's Fantasy Wrestling Draft, our longest edition of True Hill Heat, where we, we this was this whole fantasy draft was a mess but i loved it it was so much fun check it out go out of your way see who won between the true heel heat men of myself and top guy jj versus the serving face and heels duo of miss chrissy love and stephanie hypes and then check out true heel heat 189 for our fifth year anniversary we are celebrating true heel heat five years of our podcast Thank you all for supporting us here on Fightful Overbook as well as the, as the True Hill Heat YouTube channel. So for Romeo, it is me, it is me, the new media forbidden door, SP3. This has been True Rewind, episode 82, 6. You can unfasten your seatbelts, take off your helmets, and we will see you next time here on True Rewind. <laughs>